you've got to be hungry. The pathway to your greatness, to your dream, and your destiny. Now, what do you mean by hungry? We're going to go in depth tomorrow, but here's what I mean about hungry. Hungry is about making it happen. What is it you desire, no matter what? When you have goals and dreams, understand and know. There will be some resistance. An airplane cannot fly without the resistance of air. You can't learn good horsemanship by riding a tame horse. And the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. That when you have goals and dreams, you want to go to that next level, you get on an airplane, what do they say? Fasten your seatbelt. Why? Because you're going to have some rejection. You're going to have some turbulence before you reach a comfortable altitude. The same thing in life. You've got to fasten your mental and emotional and psychological seatbelt. Why is it that most people fail? Because they're not mentally ready for the game, this game called life. They're not in it to win it. They're just surviving. Most people work on jobs where they pay them just enough to keep them from quitting, and they work just hard enough to keep from getting fired. Come on, a contract in mediocrity. There's a book I'm reading now called The Road to Your Best Stuff. When you bring out your best stuff, you've got to be willing to do whatever is required. When you bring out your best stuff, you take no prisoners and eat the wounded. <laughs> when you bring out your best stuff. <laughs> Let me change up up in here. I will be upstage, upstairs tonight eating hot pepper on a fork. I can't wait to get in the room and I'm going to drink my tea tomorrow. They got these little things. I will be drinking my tea and I will hold my little pinky finger up, you know. <laughs> my little pinky finger up and I drink my tea because I'm in London. Whatever. Listen, we're going to have a good time. But let me share this with you. As you look at your goals and look at your dreams, I want to ask you a question. Don't just focus on your goals and dreams. Ask yourself the question, where am I? Where am I? That's the first question that God asked man. Adam, where are you? Why? It's very important to know where are you in relationship to your abilities, in relationships to your talents, in relationship to your dream, in relationship to the things that you want out of your life, out of your relationships, out of yourself. Where are you in terms of your contribution to the planet? Where are you in relationship to be in alignment with why you're here? They say that the two most important moments in our lives, the day that we're born and the day we realize why we were born. Why are you here? Do you realize when most people die, the only way that we will know is that some loved one or family members or friends will call their house and they didn't answer the telephone, or newspapers accumulate at the door. Or there's a stench that comes through the walls. Why? Because most people's lives are so inconsequential. You have something special. You were created on purpose with a purpose. You have something special. There's something you brought to the universe. There's something that you have. Some invention, some idea, some music, some book, some voice that we need. You are an unrepeatable miracle. You are a masterpiece because you're a piece of the master. What do you want? And you got to be hungry. Why? Because it's not going to be easy. Write this down. You're going to fail your way to success. You're going to fail your way to success. Walt Disney, he, he had a nervous, two nervous breakdowns, and he filed bankruptcy seven times. Why will we fail our way to success? Because the system is designed against you. It's against you. That's not right. I know. It's not right that birds eat worms, and they do. It's not right. In the United States, men and women working on the same job, they pay the men more than they pay the women. Why? Why would they do that? And we say, oh, we're Christians. Do unto others as you like others do unto you. Why would you do that? Women doing the same work. Side by side, pay the men more, pay the women less. Why? It's not fair. It's not fair. I was on a tour with a guy named Peter Lowe. Motivators, it's called Get Motivated. And so the reason I was on there is because they would got so many letters saying, we want to see that guy, Les Brown, who was on public television. So finally, because of public demand, they put me on. That's the first time they ever had a black guy on that wasn't a, a football player, a basketball player. First they sent me a letter saying, do you realize that you are black and Americans will not respond to 
a black guy who was an inspirational speaker. I wrote him back. Thank you for reminding me that I'm black. I never would have known that if you hadn't told me. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, right. Whatever. But let me share something with you. So, you your ability to stay on the tour was determined how much product you could sell. So, Brian Tracy, he had an hour and a half. Zig Ziglar, when he was alive, he had an hour and a half. Jim Rowan, he had an hour and a half. Guess what they gave me? 15 minutes! And they said, now listen, Les, everybody has sold over $300,000. If you are not able to make the cut, we can't carry you on this tour. Because how much do I have? How much time? 15 minutes. So I got five minutes to introduce myself. Five minutes to give my speech. Five minutes, Bradley, to drive people to the back of the room. I said, are you serious? You're, you're not kidding me, are you? No. Fifteen minutes. They said they, they wanted to see you. I, I didn't invite you here. The people requested you. And if you don't sell a minimum of $300,000, when you speak, you have disqualified yourself. You won't make the cut. I said, come on. 50 minutes is a lot of time, Mr. Brown. I said, I need more time. Are you coming up with excuses? You teach people they gotta be hungry. You teach people that you, 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 you gotta be unstoppable. We, we're giving you a shot. You're here and we're giving you 15 minutes. I said, one and a half the same time as Zig Ziglar and Jim Rowan and, and Brian Tracy. Oh, listen. 15 minutes gives you an advantage. It gives me, I tell you what, if it's such an advantage, why don't you, you, you're speaking for an hour and a half, give me your hour and a half, you take my 15 minutes and let me watch you do it. Oh no, uh, I've got to keep my hour and a half, but we, we're giving you your 15 minutes. So I spoke for 15 minutes and I sold 55,000 hours worth of products. So I said, well, I did, $55,000 worth of product. Guess what they said? <laughs> you won't make it. You won't be in the next city with us. You have just eliminated yourself. I eliminated myself? Yes. Because you didn't make the cut. You didn't sell a minimum of $300,000. And you knew that going in. But I could have if I had an hour and a half just like you guys. They say, oh, there you go, give an excuse. Oh, you could have. Like, uh, you, you could have been pregnant. No, it's not that kind of party. You didn't do it. Now, when things happen to you, you can become bitter or you can become better. I want you to come tomorrow. We're gonna be speaking tomorrow here in London. And the reason I want you to come because I want you to see Marie Cosgrove. Marie Cosgrove was the only female on the job where she worked, and she full commission, single mother of four, and they told Marie, listen, you're making too much money, so we need to cut your salary, your commission. Come on, yeah, we want you to go on salary. She said, I can't afford that. You guys are not gonna pay me what I'm earning in commission. I know, because you're making too much money. So guess what? She didn't agree. They fired her. Here's the good news. Helen Keller says, when one door closes, another door opens. But most people spend so much time looking at the closed door, they don't take the time to look at the open door. She got a phone call from the CEO, her former CEO, and said, hey, Marie, uh, would you be interested in buying our company? <laughs> now Marie started another company. She said, you want to sell the company? Yes. Yes, we want to sell it to you because we know you know the business. So she said, send me the numbers. And they sent the numbers. Guess what they discovered? There's a song, a gospel song, and that in our community said, if you dig a hole for me, you better dig too, because the one you dig for me might be for you. She was earning 86% of the revenue for the company. And after looking at the numbers, Marie Cosgrove, single mother of five, she'll speak tomorrow, she bought the company.
Hello? <laughs> What's that like? Poetic justice. She was laid off, came back and bought the company. That fired her. Now, in my case, guess what I did? Now, I'm introducing my book tomorrow called You Gotta Be Hungry. And next year, no, this year, 2018, I will have my own tour. So I thank them for treating me like that. I thank them for giving me 15 minutes. Now I'll give myself an hour and a half, or two hours, or three hours, whatever. Oh, behave. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the medication. I'm sorry. So here's the key. Things can make you bitter, or you can become better. L.C. Robinson said things may happen around you and things may happen to you, but the only things that really count are the things that happen in you. And had they not done that, had they not treated me unfairly, had they not restricted my ability to be on the tour, to earn more money, I would not have worked as hard as I've worked to get here. I said, you guys go ahead and do what you're going to do. My mentor said, Brownie, he said, even though you don't have millions of dollars poured into you like Tony Robbins, he said, change lives. Keep the main thing the main thing. You decided you wanted to do this because somebody changed your life. Change lives. He says, impact drives income. Impact drives requests. He's right. As a result of my focusing on not trying to hype somebody up, and by the way, this is not a sales fest. This is going to change your life. This is about an experience that introduces you to a power, part of yourself that you don't know right now. You can't read the label if you're locked in the box. And so... As a result of that, focusing on changing lives. Now, I will have my own tour. Now, in 15 different cities. Now, with corporate sponsorship. Now, controlling every aspect of it. Elsie Robinson was right. Things may happen around you, things may happen to you, but the only things that really count are the things that happen in you. I decided I'm gonna book myself. I decided I am going to have my own schedule, my own platform. Platform. I decided I will train my own speakers. I decided I'm going to have the music that I want. I will have all of the elements so that when people step in to the experience, the Les Brown experience, Oliver Wendell Holmes said that once a man or woman's mind has been expanded with an idea, concept, or experience, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. You have something special. You have greatness within you. And understand that the system is stacked against you. You weren't the lucky sperm. The system is stacked against you, but it's okay. Because when you have goals that's outside of your comfort zone, then what happens is this. You introduce yourself to a part of yourself that you don't know right now. Oliver Wendell Holmes was right. What happens in you is major. You're watching me for a reason. You're not watching other people living their dream. You're not a fan. You were born to be rich. Everything I'm saying is already in you. Everything that I'm saying is common sense, but not common practice. Everything that I'm saying is resonating with you, not just in your ears, but in your heart. You know what I'm saying is right, because it's you. I only attract millionaires or millionaires in training. I believe that they're winners, they're losers, and there are people who, do, who have not yet discovered how to win. They're winners. They're losers. And they're winners who have not discovered how to win. If you have not earned your first million yet, and only 1% of the population has done that, and I've done it 65 times, get the ticket. Be there. Well, I don't have enough money. You truly can't afford not to be there. Get the ticket to be there. People buy what they want and beg for what they need. Well, I'm busy. I've got something else I've got to do. Success is not convenient. Hello? Success is not convenient. Well, you know what? I'll see you the next time. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, you won't. You'll see somebody I trained. I had a meeting scheduled with Wayne Dyer. We were supposed to go to public television to do a motivational presentation together. We had agreed, PBS had agreed in principle, and we scheduled a time to do it, and we kept putting it off, putting it off. And then he said, Les, I'm coming to Orlando. Are you and Mickey Mouse busy? I said, no, whatever. What are you talking about, big boy? He said, I'm coming. Let's go into the studio and sign the contract. I said, okay, Wade, great. Wayne Dyer, 
wrote, pull your own strings. Wayne Dyer, one of the greatest motivational philosophers of all time. And I got a call, Les, I, are you online? No, I'm not, go online. Why? Wayne is gone, come on. Wayne didn't have an ounce of fat on his body. He swam maybe a mile or two miles every day. Wayne, Wayne's out of here, he's gone? Come on, we have the same mentor, Jack Bolin. The Church of the Day out of Warren, Michigan. Wayne is gone? <sighs> when are you going? We don't know the day or the hour or how. So, somebody said that life is short and unpredictable. No, 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 no. It is unpredictable, but life is not short. It's just that too many people take too long to live. Playing it safe. Don't want to get hurt. You're going to get hurt in life. You're going to fail. You're going to be rejected. It's a part of the process. It's not personal. Don't say, well, why does that have to, why does it happen to me? Why not you? Who would you suggest? You want to give us some names or some email addresses? <laughs> Listen, I want you to go online to lesbrowninlondon.com. Go online. Get your ticket now. This is not for everybody. Now, if you hear me in your heart and you know who you are, then you be there, lesbrowninlondon.com. If you just hear me in your ear, here's what I want you to do. I want to say something to you, but I want you to do this right now. Hold your index finger up right now. Put it in your ear and listen to me. You have something special. You have greatness. Come on, Yasset, join me. You have greatness in you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. You were born to be rich and healthy and have great relationships. The world is a better place because you are here. You were chosen with love. Yes, it's your time. It's your time. We will give you an experience that will make the rest of your life the best of your life. This is your time. Yes, you've got greatness in you. Very good. Take it out right now. The reason I said that, I didn't want to go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, behave, baby. It's in there. Now you can't help it. I'm going to make you rich in spite of yourself. I'm going to make you unstoppable in spite of yourself. I'm going to help you to get unstuck. I'm going to help you to begin to let go of those negative behaviors. I'm an assassin. I'll kill every mediocre demon in you. Yes, bam, I got you right now. Bam, uh-huh, it's in there. I'm nurturing those seeds of greatness. They're going to begin to explode. Don't you mess with me. You about to make me lose my mind. Up in here. Up in here. You about to make me act a fool. Up in here. I'm sorry, I got problems. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. I know you didn't expect this. I'm sorry. I love it. I promise I will be good. Oh, behave, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, where, am I, where am I going to be tomorrow? Central Hall, Westminster. Yes, oh Lord, call the fire department. <laughs> and have a few ambulances on the side, but somebody's going to go into a coma. I'm going to have some of them speaking in unknown tongues. Chevrolet, Honda, Honda, Toyota, Toyota, Toyota. Tabamota, Tabamota. Well, we're going to have a good time. <laughs> Okay, so let's see some of the questions that some of you might have. What, do they have any questions for me? Uh, Sabrina Benson made an amazing story. What did Sabrina say?